Okay, peeps, welcome back. <clears throat> so today, LTCN and BCHG are popping off again. Let's get it. So the first thing I want to bring up is these super thanks from Byron Melgar. Thank you uh, for the 99. We appreciate you. Uh, we work pretty hard at this channel to get all this content out to you guys. Um, as we've told you guys before, <clears throat> excuse me, we're doing it. At least a half a dozen, at least a half a dozen different things every single week. I mean, we manage multiple portfolios, doing options, futures, stocks, crypto, uh, running this YouTube channel, doing a whole bunch of different stuff. So we're very busy. Uh, so anything that you guys can give us, uh, we're grateful for. So I appreciate you. Thank you again. Shout out to Byron Melgar for that. So now let's get into the content. Um, but before I do, there is one quick announcement I want to make. So uh, we have decided that we're going to start posting these videos. Uh, pretty much every video we do, unless it's in the evening, the evening videos are not going to change as of right now. But for the morning videos, we're going to change that time frame from what it currently is, which is 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time to 6 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Uh, and for those of you guys that understand how stocks work, this applies to stocks and options, not futures in crypto, because those are essentially 24 hour markets. Um, the stock market closes or it opens at 630 in the morning on Mondays and closes at 1 p.m. every day. And it's open Monday through Friday. So we're going to start posting our videos 30 minutes before market open. That should give you guys plenty of time to check out the content. Uh, do what you want with it. If you don't want to watch the content at that point in time, that's entirely fine. Not a problem. Uh, just take a look at it whenever you can. I mean, there's, you know, we've posted these at 9 a.m. for the longest time and you guys don't seem to have a problem with that. So uh, if you don't, just keep watching it at 9. If you'd want to watch it before the market opens, there's that too. So anyways, uh, we'll get into LTCN now. So LTCN, um, it does look like it's having a resurgence, so we bounced almost almost perfectly off of this support zone. Not exactly, uh, but kind of what I'm looking for here is a breakout out of this trend line here. As you guys can see, pretty much what we're looking for is a candle close above this trend line. This would indicate that there is a high likelihood that this thing is going to break out and go higher. Uh, you guys are probably wondering, why do I say that? Well, you have another breakout here. As you guys can see, once this thing broke out, I mean, the move was <clears throat> absolutely massive. So if we measure that move here, you guys can see that the move was, uh, give me a second on this, it's actually a little hard to measure. So the move on this thing was absolutely monstrous, about 250% gain. So it went from, uh, from the breakout point, roughly about $16 all the way up to $54. So you're talking more than a 3X just on that move alone. Now, does it mean when this thing breaks out of this trend line that it's going to do a 3x from that point? No, not necessarily. Um, I mean, if that did happen, it would put it exactly in this resistance zone up here. So <clears throat> a 3x, the current price would be about 110 bucks, uh, which would be pretty much almost in the middle of the zone. So uh, one more thing I want to point out to you guys is we still need to get past that pesky bear zone which is right here at 50. This is right around the um, top of the control bar here, as you guys can see, and that is generally speaking a seller's area. What does this mean? It means that uh, bears are gonna be sitting up here waiting to dump on everybody else's heads. And of course, that's what they did back here, but you know, we got our positions like back here in the 10 to $13 range. Uh, we did not buy all the way up here, just so y'all know. Uh, it doesn't mean that, it doesn't mean that buying it you know, any of these prices in here is necessarily expensive. It's just we try to do things based on technicals. So anyways, uh, once we get past that zone, we should be heading up to somewhere between, I would say, roughly about 75 to 135 bucks. And again, reason it's 75 is because you can see this <clears throat> kind of struggle here before the big move up. And then you have your resistance here. So 100 to 135 bucks. So we'll do the measurement on this real quick and take a look at it. So from the current price, whoops, actually, sorry about that. I uh, just measured this as if it was a red candle, whoopsies. So from the, from the current price to the wick high up here, as you guys can see, it's nearly 53%. 
from the current price to that $75 level. Um, about 105% on that move. And from the current price to the next zone, it's going to be about 170 to about 262% move. So pretty large move there. Now, if you wanted to wait for this to pull back into this zone between 23 to 27, which is possible, that could happen even before we have a breakout. Um, I mean, it could just it could just go all the way down, kind of ride that trend line down into support, and then bang, pop out of there. That does happen sometimes. So if you wanted to wait for that area, that's up to you. It would be about 126% move to get up to that uh, bear trap or the bull trap sell zone up there. So up to 75 bucks, you'd be looking at about 191%. And then up to the next major level, about 268 to 410%. Again, whatever you guys think is the best level and how you want to go about getting into your positions, that's entirely up to you. Um, I guess it really kind of depends on how much risk you want to take and how much reward you want to get. So... Uh, that is LTCN. We're actually going to go over BCHG next. So I would say that we're probably going to draw a trend line on this one as well, because again, something very similar did happen back here. So as you guys can see right here, we kind of have this actually, probably even if I draw it like this, I would say that's probably more accurate. So, uh, well, I don't know. I guess it doesn't really matter. But yeah, so pretty much once this thing broke out, we had a gap up and then there was a massive squeeze. As you guys can see here, this thing went from basically $4 all the way up to $24. So that is a 6x on your money. If you bought down at $4, congrats, man. You are making bank right now. I mean, you're not actually making anything until you sell, but you know what I mean. Um, so yeah, that's a, that's a pretty big move. I mean, that's like what, 5 600% something like that. So if we get another break of this trend line here, that could happen. We could basically just smash straight through this resistance. As you guys saw after this breakout, we basically in one week, we smashed straight through two levels of resistance. Just didn't even respect it. Just said, get the hell out of my way. I'm going straight up. I don't care. Uh, that's exactly what happened. And so something like that could happen here where we could just basically go straight from support straight into uh moving into the next level which is up here at 42 to about 62 or 60 dollars um that's a possibility so as of right now the current support is still 10 dollars to about 1260 current resistance is still 18 dollars to about 20 and that wick high up there is roughly about 24 dollars so um, if we measure the move from the current price to the resistance is about 27% to about 40%. If you wanted to wait for a little bit lower move, uh, you could. There's no guarantee it's going to happen. But then again, it could happen. It actually could break support and go lower. That's always a possibility. It'd be about 59 to 78%. And then the move all the way to the wick high up there is going to be about 110%. So if we were met to measure it from the current price to basically get back to the all-time highs, which is up there at 60 bucks, I'm going to show you guys this in a sec. You'd be looking at about 300% move. Uh, so basically $15 up to 60, you're talking about a 4X on that. And of course, we've gone over the channel that the uh, Fibonacci's do say that the maximum price target for BCHG, according to the Fibonacci's, is $250. Uh, I know it seems insane, but... Last bull cycle, as we showed you guys on this channel, um, Dogecoin did a 750x, if you can believe that, from one tenth of a penny all the way up to 75 cents. Uh, it was absolutely insane. So, kind of wish we had bought more. But, anyways, uh, so HZN did have a red weekly close here. Uh, this is a very bearish looking candle. So, I would say it's likely we're probably going to come back down to the support, which is between roughly about 390 to 420. Uh, 690 to 810 is going to be about your resistance. And then 1140 to 1230 will be the next zone above that. Uh, if it does come back down to this lower zone, which I don't think is going to happen, it'd be about 250 to $3. Of course, if that happens, we're going to be buying a lot 
of this particular position. I can tell you that right now, we will be loading the boat heavy on this position. So anyways, uh, from support to resistance, you're looking at about 69, 70%, somewhere there to about 98%. And then up to the next level, 178% to about 202% respectively. So ETCG, this one has closed lower than the previous week. Again, today's Friday and the markets are closed right now, which indicates that this candle is indeed complete. The next candle will not open until Monday. That's how this works. So it did close lower. However, it did not have a candle close below the support zone. So technically, this is still bullish. Um, and again, it closed above support. It closed above this blue EMA here, which is a very good sign because if it went down to the red one, that would indicate that it broke multiple levels of support. So it broke the middle of the EMA, broke the support, broke the trend line and even went back within this channel that would be kind of a warning sign i would say but it hasn't happened yet but do keep in mind the macd here is uh, currently experiencing a death cross it doesn't necessarily mean anything i mean we had one here and then it kind of pulled back a little bit chopped sideways and then basically just moonshot from that point but we don't yet know how this is going to play out so um, as of right now all the support structures are holding the current support is 13 to about 1580 Resistance is going to be about 1760 ish to about 20 bucks. And we do have some ETCG, just so you all know. Uh, we are actually a little bit out of the money, so to speak, at this point. So we're a little bit, uh, I'm not going to say underwater, but we're in a drawdown currently. So to get back up to the top of the zone here is about 16%, and the resistance is going to be about 29 to 46%. Okay, GXLM. Um, I'm actually going to get rid of these because this price pattern was invalidated. So we're sitting at the top of the wedge here. We kind of had, if this was a green bar, I would say this is a very bullish bar. Of course, it would be a hammer candle, but it's not. So uh, the candle did close above the bottom of this candle body low, which is generally speaking a good sign. And we do kind of have this... Uh, tweezer bottom here although i would have preferred to see this weekly candle be green because generally when you when you're looking for something that's bullish or bearish with a tweezer bottom or tweezer top you want to see a candle color flip so if it's going to be bullish you want to see it turn from red to green and if it's going to be bearish you want to see it turn from green to red um actually going to try to find an example and maybe show you guys what i'm talking about here so you can see for yourself so we'll use LTZ as, as an example. So this is a tweezer top, okay? So you got your green week and then you have a, your red week here and what happened afterwards dumped all the way back down to the EMAs and then a red one and a green one and then boom, straight up after that. <clears throat> so that's kind of how you would uh, look at tweezer bottoms and tweezer tops. So anyways, um, I would still say support is going to be along this trend line. So about 40 bucks, it could come all the way down to about 33, which is the bottom of the wedge top of these candles here. So 33, 32 ish, somewhere in there. So let's just say you got in at 36, so somewhere in the middle, you'd be looking at about 46 to 62% to get back up to that resistance and 92% to get back up to that wick high there. So ETH E, um, this one is still within this cup and handle pattern it's literally saved by the wick here uh, if it wasn't for that that obviously would not have been good so we do have a death cross on the macd again it doesn't necessarily mean anything but it could we just we don't know yet we would have to wait and see if the price is going to confirm the move on the macd or not or if it's just a fake out so anywhere along the bottom of this um trend line here would be ideal support or channel, I should say. It's either a channel or it's a handle pattern for uh, the cup and handle. But um, again, there's no guarantee it's it's going to stay green. I mean, it's this wick is bouncing from around this wick. We told you guys this before. Uh, it does happen a lot in trading. But me personally, I would probably, I, I just simply would not buy this unless it was literally at this trend line, I just simply wouldn't do it. So that way the uh, risk could be reduced. 
So 17 to about $18 is going to be the support below that. And then the trend line itself from the bottom is going to be about 17 and a quarter to where current price is roughly about 2170. So somewhere between 17 to 22 bucks, uh, you know, kind of pick your poison on that. But we'll just say you got into ETH E somewhere around the middle here. So about 23 to 42% to get up to resistance and then 75% to get back up to those candle bodies up there. And from that same price level to the cup and handle, assuming that it actually holds, you'd be looking at about 167% move. So Zcash, uh, this one did have a pretty epic bounce here. Actually, if we measure this, you guys can see just how large it was. So this was not a small move by any means. This was about 23%, so epic bounce on that one. Uh, but it did close lower. We did have another lower red candle, so there is a possibility. I would say there's an equal possibility, in my opinion, this thing could either bounce higher or go lower, just simply on the basis that that's a red candle. So the current support is between 430 to about 510. Current resistance, 740 to about $8. And the wake high up there is 10-ish, or 10 and a quarter, I should say. So if you wanted to wait for that pullback into support, which is a possibility at this point, it'd be about... 60% to 75% and then you'd be looking at as a as high as 122 123% to get back up to that wick up there. So, uh GSOL is bouncing. It is actually bouncing. We can get rid of this cuz we know that this broke bearish, but again, just cuz it's bouncing doesn't necessarily mean anything. It could just be a fake out and it could go lower. We don't know yet, but Pretty much what we're looking for here is a potential break of the trend line or the trend line to hold and for this thing to move higher. Do understand that if this dumps, the dump could be pretty substantial. You'd be looking at as much as potentially maybe 55% drop. Um, I would still state that if it was me, I would wait to get this somewhere between 175 to $200. So if we take that measured move from that level to the top, you'd be looking at about 205%. And so this is mana. <clears throat> uh, mana did have a nice little squeeze here too. But again, we have a lower red candle. So that's something to keep in mind. Uh, do, do also keep in mind that the Bitcoin having is going to have, it's going to happen today. So the Bitcoin having is today. I don't have it pulled up right now, but it is today. Um, or at least that's what it says on the clock. And so... Yeah, essentially time is running out to get into the altcoins. We're going to start buying pretty heavily into uh, a lot of these crypto positions starting tomorrow. That was kind of our plan from the beginning. But anyways, um, this thing could bottom out somewhere between $17.50 to $20 or $20.50, I should say, on that support. Or it could bottom out at $26.30. So pick your poison here. Anything from basically $17.50 to $26.00. Let's just say you got in at the top of the zone here. Uh, you'd be looking at a pretty large increase, so roughly about 247% on that move. So GBAT here, um, once again, this thing has broken down. This has actually confirmed bearish out of this trend line here, as you guys can see. You could actually probably pull this back a little bit further so we can see a nice, clear multiple touch points here, as you guys can see. So it broke down, but it did bounce on the EMAs, but we had a weekly close lower like the other ones. I would say likely this thing is going to move down a little bit lower. Again, I'd be looking to pick up somewhere around this $10 area. That's just my opinion, of course. You guys can pick up wherever you want to. So the move back up to the wick high up here is going to be about 230%. And again, this support zone down here is roughly about 440 to about 510 so quite a drop even from that ten dollar level again if you didn't want to buy at ten dollars you don't feel comfortable buying everything at ten dollars i would totally understand these markets are extremely volatile they are the most mar volatile markets i've ever been in i mean the whipsaw effect in this market is just insane when these markets go crazy so you could just dca down um now as for g link this thing did have a confirmed close below the trend line here you can see these multiple touch points here 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 and we finally got a break 
Uh, this is a doji candle, so it's kind of indecisive, but I would say it's probably going to come a little lower. I would not buy this unless it was somewhere between 67 to about 84 bucks. That's just me. So to get back up to that wick high is about 190%. If you guys are wanting to know this lower level, keep in mind, uh, this is going to be about 42, 45. For those of you guys that think it's actually going to go lower and we potentially might have a MACD death cross here. So also keep a lookout on that. So Phil G, this thing has come a little bit lower, but again, if it was me, I, because this thing ran up so much, uh, it wouldn't surprise me if it came back down to somewhere in these levels, roughly about 65 to 84%. Um, if you guys wanted to get into this earlier than that, that's entirely up to you, but I'm just kind of showing you guys where I think the best ideal entries would be. So the move would be about 385%. <clears throat> Something I want you guys to understand about crypto though, is generally speaking, the harder these things run up, the harder they drop, okay? So I'm gonna show you guys actually an example of that. We go back over here real quick to Doge. We'll take a look at the Doge chart. You guys can see that this move on Doge is pretty good, right? But really, it's not really all that good because look at this. I mean, this is great, but really it kind of looks like this <laughs> compared to this. So anyways, I'm just going to give you guys a realistic example of what this could look like. So this move, I know this has nothing to do with grayscale, but just understand the grayscale trust could move like this. So this move within a matter of weeks, weeks, that's it went up 900%. But then from that peak down to this basically wick low down here, just a few weeks later, a massive 75% drop. So keep in mind that could happen. Uh, that's, that's definitely a realistic possibility. I want you guys to understand the rewards and the risks of crypto. Okay. There is risk. So keep that in mind, you know, making money in the markets is all about risk management. That's really what it's all about risk management and timing. So not financial advice, but I'm just giving you guys a tidbit of uh, wisdom there, or basically what I perceive the markets to be based on experience. So GLIV, um, I would reiterate one last time I, that I think this is probably going to bottom somewhere between 28 to 26. So we had a confirmed close below, weekly close below this trend line here. So it could come back quite a bit lower. I still think it bottoms out somewhere around that $26, $28 level. But to get back up to this zone up here, uh, you'd be looking at a pretty large 200% gain. So you're talking nearly, what is that? That's like um, basically almost a 3x. So let's actually, yeah, let's actually look at this price. So yeah, 26 well, what is 26 times three? 26 times three is 78. So yeah, that's a little bit more than a three X. But anyways, uh, this is our video on LTCN, BCHG, and the rest of the trusts. Hope you all enjoyed this content. Uh, please like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll see you all later. Peace.